this gorgeous thing. Just portrait of a boy, it's not, we don't know who he is. It's by Peter Lilly, later Sir Peter Lilly, who was, of course, the court portraitist to Charles II. This is quite early, 1658 to, to 60, just before Charles II's restoration. And its most distinctive feature, apart from the gorgeous frame, of course, which is unique at the gallery, one of the greatest frames in the gallery, is its colour. I have always loved Peter Lilly. It's rather unfortunate he ended up being doomed to record Charles II's many mistresses and flattering them and giving them different shades of glorious satin to swathe them in. He was a very talented artist, Dutch by origin and training. And I've always thought, quietly to myself, that Lilly was one of the greatest masters of brown that I've ever seen. Usually you think of Rembrandt in those terms, but Rembrandt doesn't use brown in a glamorous way. Lily does. When you look at Lily's uh, use of brown, you want to rush out and change your wardrobe. Here we have, supposedly, a shepherd boy. We know he's a shepherd because he has a staff, which is actually probably a hoe, and a pipe. Looks decidedly like a recorder to me. And these were both things that were part of the stock in trade of a shepherd. He would pipe to while away the long hours and to lull his sheep into a sense of security. Also, music is the food of love. And all of these poetic shepherds were invariably in love. He's sitting under an overhang in the country. He's pensive. In other words, this is not a real shepherd. This is a poetic shepherd. The 17th century was rife with poetry about Arcadia, about lovelorn youths, about pipe-playing shepherds in love with nymphs or milkmaids or both. And this is one of them. It's a young boy mooning in a poetic fashion. He has wonderful hair, great hair and he's just waved in a hundred yards of brown satin. It's an incredibly glamorous and charming painting, technically extraordinary. There's been much debate about who it could be, because there is an assumption that this kind of painting, although clearly fantasy in one sense, could also be a portrait. But I would just say that this youth with his full lips and his slanted eyes bears an uncanny resemblance to that ideal of beauty, Charles II's mistresses, all of whom looked as like as peas in a pod, and all of whom shared these kind of features. So I think it's a waste of time to try and identify this boy. One other thing about this, because the frame is so extraordinary, it belonged to Horace Walpole and hung at Strawberry Hill. So this is a really important um, painting to have here. It came to the gallery in 1911, as part of the gift of Charles Fairfax Murray. Fairfax Murray was a painter himself of the pre-Raphaelite persuasion, but he was a great collector too. Something of a cad, I think, Fairfax Murray. I may be wrong, but he had one family in Italy and one family in England and never the twain met. But he was a great collector and he gave generously to other galleries other than this as well. But in 1910, I think, he was approached by Henry Yates Thompson, who was the chair of the Board of Governors in those days. And together, they filled a gap at Dulwich Picture Gallery. Our founders, Bourgeois and Desenfant, being Swiss and French, respectively, had no great respect for the British school, and consequently had rather left it out when they were commissioned by the King of Poland to put together a great national collection. The British school was represented by a couple of Reynoldses, not very much else. This was seen as a gap by the end of the 19th century, and Fairfax Murray, in one fell swoop, gave a group of pictures that actually brought the British collection up to standard. It was an extraordinary gift. The date, I think, is significant. These paintings arrived at the gallery in 1911. In other words, it was a centenary gift. The gallery was exactly 100 years old. No better birthday present could possibly be imagined than this wonderful group of paintings.